Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Yes, I pointed out a number of times that this is one of the most difficult verses in Scripture to understand. For the simple reason, there is no time in eternity. How can we possibly explain this except to say that it is some kind of an accommodation where you have a hiatus in heaven that's related to us in human terms so we can comprehend that there is a hiatus. Or that events transpiring in, in eternity will have ramifications on the earth for the people who are here at that time uh, that will total a half hour in, in its time span. We can look at those possibilities. However, what's really important is to understand the pattern, the pattern. We've pointed out before on a number of our teachings that Revelation chapters 8, 9, 10, and 11, um, or actually beginning back even before that to chapter 7 and to chapter 6, we see a parallelism to the book of Joshua chapter 6. Pay attention. With the fall of Jericho, in Joshua you have a numerical pattern. They march around seven days, but the seventh day they do it seven times. Then, they had to be totally silent when they marched around Jericho. Then, they blow the last trumpet and the walls come down and this city has been given to us by the Lord. Then, there are the two spies, the Metaglein, the spies, who rescue Rahab and her family. This is exactly what you see happening in the book of Revelation. Remember, there's nothing in the book of Revelation that's not found in the Old Testament. So what we see is this. The pattern of seven, but from the seventh seven is a subset of seven. You've got seven seals, but from the seventh of the seven seals, you have seven trumpets. Okay? They had to be totally silent marching around Jericho, just as they marched around seven days, but the seventh day, they had to do it seven times, total silence. Then you have the two spies in Jericho. When we get to Revelation chapter 11, we have the two witnesses. Then when the last trumpet is blown in Jericho, this city has been given to us by the Lord. In Revelation, the last trumpet is blown. This world has become the kingdom of our God and his Messiah. It is a Pesha interpretation of the book of Joshua. The silence that takes place in this pattern in Revelation 8.1 corresponds to the silence that takes place in the book of Joshua. That is, the fall of Jericho is a picture of the fall of Satan's kingdom when God's people take over and these numerical patterns of judgments unfolding in groups of seven. And again, the role of the two witnesses recapitulating or replaying the role of the two spies who rescued Rahab and her family. But going back to this issue of how do you apply time to eternity, that is a very, very difficult issue. Again, speculatively, we can say that what's happening on the earth is a reflection of things happening in eternity. And the ramifications of what happens in eternity take place on earth within that short time period. In other words, the time is not really happening in heaven. It's happening on earth <coughs> where we hear what's happening in heaven in human terms, in terms of our time, that is Kairos. The other aspect, of course, is it's showing that there's a hiatus of events. You do have chronos, chronology in heaven, another kind of time, 
where there's no clock. It's just an order of events. And there's a hiatus in it, and it's simply accommodating it or relating it in human terms. But it is a very difficult verse to interpret. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much for your question. God bless.